So it's really interesting because on the surface, it doesn't appear to have much rationale with the way the market's performing. But the reality is most stock analysts tend to focus on forward-looking expectations rather than you know prior results. And so, for example, most analysts right now, they're completely ignoring 2020 results. They're focused on expectations for 2021 and even 2022. And those results are expected to be quite good. Um, we do expect the economy to recover quite nicely. In addition to that, you know, there are some other positive factors in the market. For example, you know, you have a very accommodative Fed, you have strong fiscal policy support, and you have low interest rates, you have low inflation, and frankly, the economic results have been pretty good over the last couple of months. So there is reason um, to, I guess, understand, I would say, why the market has recovered the way it has. So it's interesting, just as a data point, the S&P 500 bottomed out in, call it, mid to late March. It was down about 35%. And as of yesterday, it has come all the way back to break even, which is really quite amazing. Now, I also don't want to make it appear that we think we're out of the woods just yet with these markets, because there are risks out there that we really think you know we should keep a close eye on. It could cause more volatility in the months ahead. For example, we have the elections coming in November. Um, undoubtedly, you're going to see more volatility. You have escalating tensions with China and the U.S. Again, um, headline type issues that could lead to more volatility. You still have 11% unemployment. And the path of the virus is still you know, pretty much unknown. And I don't think there's much expectation for a vaccine before next year at the earliest. So again, for all of these reasons, I think we need to be cautious and we should expect some volatility in the coming months.